Just shy of a year following the release of Ring and Spiral, audiences were treated to the second sequel to the film, which started the whole series. This time, Toho wasn't playing around. They wanted to make sure viewers knew where Spiral sat, as a what-if style side story, and that this movie was the true sequel to Ring. That was how Ring 2 came to fruition upon release on January 23rd, 1999. Here, literally everything about Spiral is tossed out the window. The optical memory, the reincarnations, literally everything. Eschewing the film series' connection to their source material. Instead, we find Ring 2 as a stricter horror film which walks the tightrope of building the story's universe without over-explaining it to the point of losing its edge. This may have been assisted by Ring 2's crew overlap with Ring, sharing director Hideo Nakata and writer Hiroshi Takahashi, offering a more logical sense of flow between these two than between Ring and Spiral. This time around, the proceedings kick off with Sadako's corpse being recovered from a well. Her body provides signs that she was alive until recently, having only just died in spite of being down there for decades. From this initial stinger of an opening, the story of Ring 2 centers on Mai, the same student of Ryuji as seen in Spiral, and Okazaki, a colleague of Reiko's. Together, the two search for Reiko, who has gone missing since the close of the first film. Here, we journey along on another mystery from another angle, as Mai Okazaki and one detective, Omura, overlap in their respective journeys. The group attempts to uncover the origins of Sadako, mining her past deeper for information about her, her parents, and her death. At one point, they visit Masami, a hospitalized friend of Tomoko, Reiko's niece who died in the first film, if you'll recall. Masami has gone mute and hates televisions. Masami's doctor, Kawajiri, attempts to exorcise Masami's demons, which leads to further complications. This is compounded by a girl named Kanai who gives Okazaki an interview after she has incurred Sadako's ire. In other words, through various electronic means, the curse of Sadako gradually spreads further and further from the source, which speaks to one of the most notable elements of Ring 2. Compared with Ring, this film is downright expansive. We argued in our video on the first film that the project was both mundane and claustrophobic. It played on the fears cultivated in an average urban setting of the late 1990s, while setting its proceedings in a number of cramped environments typical of this era. In Ring 2, on the other hand, the horror we examine is downright agoraphobic in its presentation. The settings are taken from the small living and work quarters and cast instead into city streets, the exteriors of buildings and the vast, expansive halls of a hospital. Not only is this visual and spatial either, the film's narrative takes on a sense of agoraphobia given how it expands on Ring's universe, cast, and lore. We're no longer trapped in the well, so to speak. The lid has been opened, the box has been opened, and we now have to deal with this evil living in the world. Sadako and her mother are no longer memories. They've evolved into projected loops, in Ring 2, there's more talk about mental energy connecting people, projection between groups of individuals, and so on. The media used to contain this anger and hatred has advanced as well. No longer does Sadako's will live solely in a tape. She can now use psychic energy, other people's videos, and even pool water to express her rage. Ring 2 also expands upon the photographs seen in the first film through the idea of spirit photography. Rather than distort what's already present in these pictures as in the first film, we instead are shown what isn't there. Sadako's power has increased so much that she can now create rather than just bend to her will. In this way, spirit photography offers another form of expansion for Ring 2. This is also shown through the idea of taking patients' photos, given that the doctor argues one's illness will change how they look. In other words, this idea is another avenue of psychic energy, and an increase in the overall size of the Ring universe. Given how this film seems markedly less confined compared with the earlier project, we also observe that Ring 2's visual effects are more experimental, and less confined by the VHS aesthetic. They're also less refined, meaning that more variety is present in the visual scares provided here. Given the amount of overlap between Ring and Ring 2, these stylistic differences are the key points of interest beyond the plot of the film itself. 
Contemporary critics were quick to argue that Ring 2 was derivative, less nuanced, and less subtle than the film which started it all. That being said, Ring 2 did find its home among the other Ring sequels in cult film circles after this initial reaction. Regardless of what the critics might have said, however, Ring 2 was at least popular enough upon release to justify another entry into the series for Toho. That's why, one more short year later, the last of the original Ring films hit theaters. That's a story we'll be getting to very shortly.